Today we're making fluffy balls of heaven, we're making a crispy pan-fried chicken, and a wonderful soup. I am, of course, talking about three dishes that come from Italia. Life can be a struggle, but a good meal does not have to be. We can make creative, nutritious, and inventive dishes for under $2 a plate. Here's the deal, everyone loves Italian food, and you might think it's expensive to make, but the truth is the best Italian food is cheap, delicious, and easy to make. You, me, andiamo. Listen, I know when you're struggling, you can't afford fancy kitchen gadgets, but you can make basically anything with just a few essentials. With just a few bonus utensils, you can get even more bang for your buck without needing space for those clunky single-use expensive appliances. This is a potato. It's cheap, it's filling, and it can be exciting if we turn this into Italian dumplings, AKA gnocchi. Light, fluffy pillows of heaven. These are cooked for a long time. This is how tender, okay? The rich gnocchi maker used something called a potato ricer, but we can use our box grater and get the same effect. I grated these potatoes right onto the counter because that's the way the Italian grandmas do it. Just make a little volcano. And then you take the uovo, and you put the uovo in the middle. Una bella forchetta. You come in and you go, boop. Ricotta cheese is pretty cheap, but ricotta literally means recooked because this is waste from mozzarella, which means it's free for Italians. Ricotta goes in. Parmigiano Reggiano, in block form. This lasts longer, it tastes better, and it's actually cheaper. Do not overwork this, okay? Now you can come in with the farina, which means flour in Italian. The amount that is correct is quanto basta, which means the right amount. You gotta just go by feel. So what you're looking for is something to just come together and be a little bit craggly. Push it down and make a big Italian pancake. Here's the move. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, and I just make strips. And now you can come in and you can just go like this. And then you can just go. These are certainly looking like Pillows of heaven. These are great just like this, but if you want to take it to the next level and give it ridges and squaggles so that it coddles the sauce, then you're gonna need a gnocchi board. Special equipment, I know, but that is a gnocchi board, my friends. Push in with the thumb and roll off, and roll off. And all it took was a little time. Let's move on to the sauce. So here we've got butter and shallots, and we can add cream and peas and crispy prosciutto because we saved so much money making the gnocchi. And then we're gonna lower the heat. Here comes cream. Oh my goodness. Oh yes. Really the best way to salt them is to put salt into your pasta water. Let's get all these guys in, oh my God. And now the self-timer is that the gnocchi float to the top when they're done. Now we can come back to our sauce here because this is just about done. Peas, parm. Look at that self-timer. It's happening. I don't make these things up. Now this is probably the most important step and it is the marriage between the sauce and the dumpling. Like young teenage minds ready to absorb everything around them and we want them to absorb this sauce. This is very important. You should always go directly from the sauce into here. No rinsing, no cooling, none of that, because this is what is going to make them one with the sauce. If you want to be even fancier, you can take whole pieces of prosciutto and just bake them in the oven. And then what you get is, oh, three-star Michelin. I rest my case. Gnocchi, the original peasant food. Filling, cheap, delicious. And then with all the money we saved, we can make a rich, velvety cream sauce fit for a king. Here we have our gnocchi, $1.96. Light, fluffy pillows of heaven. We did it! Let's make another cheap Italian eat. Fratelli d'Italia, l'Italia se desta. Crispy pan-fried chicken. It's like when you go to the butcher and they've got the bread and chicken cutlets in there, you can buy them. But guess what? It's cheaper to make. Well, okay, one of my favorite tools is the humble potato peeler because it is a zester. If you're very gentle, you can leave the pith behind. The pith is the white part here. It's very bitter. Parm. So what we're trying to do is create a very flavorful breading and I think that the cheese and the zest add to the flavor that's already built into the Italian breadcrumbs. Get that all moved around. All right, so we add a little salt in here, very important, and some pepper. Cut through, just butterfly that open. 
We don't want this breadcrumb to burn before the inside is cooked. So the way to avoid that is by making sure the chicken is really thin so that it cooks by the time the breadcrumb is perfectly crispy and wonderful. We are gonna pound this thin. This guy's going over here. Now we need to figure out how to glue the breadcrumbs onto the chicken. And you could use eggs or you could go to the packet drawer and you could get free flavor glue in the form of mayonnaise and mustard. Massage it gently into the breasts. You will come to the crumbs of bread and you, you will play the game of gluing. Nice hot pan, a little bit of oil. All right, look at that. That's a beautiful breast. And now put it in the pan, away from you. Okay, and at this point, it's definitely time to wash the hands. Nice and crispy, not so bad. Salad time, people. Tomatoes, cherry, salt. Lemon! Potato peeler can also be a parm shaver. Look at that, ha-ha! This goes on the plate. Okay, look at this. We got a nice balanced meal. We got our protein, we got our fats, we've got our greens. Beautiful piece of chicken right here. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, here we go. Mm. Put the phone on do not disturb. Give me a moment here. This was only $1.98 and it tastes absolutely great, but I added even more value by giving you multiple uses for that potato peeler, but we're not done yet. I'm really excited about this next one. Here we go, we're making a white bean and spinach soup. You're gonna love it, it's delicious. Okay, so the first thing we start with is oil in a pan. So one of the best ways to get added flavor into your soup is to brown sausage. It's a spicy sausage. This looks wonderful. I can smell the fennel seeds that were put in here. Free flavor. Now it is time for the Holy Trinity. Carrots, onion, and celery, also known as sofrito. It's the base to everything you love. Okay, I like to do the carrots next. Okay, celery going. Here comes some pepinero. Here comes salt. Here come the beans. If you watched the dry bulk episode, then you know you can save 50% by using dry bulk white beans. You can add some rosemary, put it in whole. Drop the stock. Save the end of your Parmigiano Reggiano. And when you make soup, drop it in because it just adds flavor. I'm gonna turn up the fire a little bit. Party's gonna get started and everyone's gonna meld together. Good food cannot be rushed. Let this hang out, top is important so it doesn't reduce. If it reduces, it gets too thick and then you don't have soup, you get stew. You know, when I give you tips, it's because I love you. We need to talk about the immersion blender, okay? This is a food processor and a blender in one. It takes up a lot less space in your kitchen, which is small, and it's cheap. It's like 20 bones. <laughs> That's gorgeous. So what we wanna do, because we don't have money for cream, is blend half of this to get a creamy texture. This is so satisfying. All right, sausage goes back in. Spinach goes in. Oh, so creamy, and I can smell that cheese rind. For more free flavor, pepperoncino. Oh, this looks wonderful. Now we gotta try this. Banging. $1.99, the half puree from the immersion blender. That is like a pro move. You know, I'm shaking my head because it's just so good that I'm in disbelief, and I truly believe you'll feel the same way if you make this, so do it. We made three awesome Italian dishes, and they were easy to make, and they were delicious, and they were cheap, and that's what this show is about. Mm, I love you.